Hello everybody, Tony Franklin here, hope you're well. I've been wanting to discuss this subject for a while because I'm asked about it quite a lot. And that is how do you set up the intonation on a fretless bass? It's a very important question and something that I've figured out, well, let me just say that I do it my way. I'm not sure if it's the proper way that the luthiers would do. I don't use any measurements. I don't use any tools or anything. It's all about the ears and the eyes. Intonation, many of you will know, it means that the instrument is in tune with itself. So if you play like an octave G, you know it's going to be a G because sometimes you can tune the open note and it's in tune, but then you can hit the octave or any note and it's not in tune. That means that the intonation is off. It means an adjustment here on the bridge, on the cells, right? So if it is sharp, okay, you play the harmonic and it's perfectly in tune. But if it's sharp, meaning that on the tuner it's sharp, it's the open is perfectly in tune, but it's sharp here, that means it's short. Sharp is short. Why is short? This distance here from there to the nut. So if it's short, sharp, short, that means it needs to be lengthened. So you would make this a little longer, that distance. So that makes the string, the scale length, a little bit longer. Wow. <laughs> And then you go through all the strings, get them so that they are perfectly in tune with themselves, and they should be able to play any note on the fingerboard and it be in tune with itself. And you can really check that with the octaves. spots where it wasn't perfect, up here especially. It's pretty close, it's close enough. There's apparently a 6%, I believe it is, error with tuning, meaning that you can go one way or the other and it is still, the, ear, the human ear for the most part registers as it being in tune. Okay, to the fretless, why is this all the more crucial? Anyway, why does it become more difficult and crucial on a fretless? Because, yeah, we don't have those fret lines to be able to guide us and for that reference point. We've got to rely on the finger position which makes it all the more challenging because yes, we want to play it in exactly the right spot. So we know that the intonation is good. Definitely not easy to do, but here's how I do it. Okay. I have the double dots on the octave. It varies from instrument to instrument. And I'll tell you why. I, another reason I don't use tools or any kind of reference or measurements because it varies from bass to bass. Here's my firm fretless, my 77 prized fretless, the one that I made the original modifications to. The fingerboard, the rosewood fingerboard on this is worn so thin, you can barely see it there, right? I have to set the action up quite a bit higher than my newer basses because it doesn't have that extra wood there to give that extra reinforcement and strength and so short of replacing the fingerboard it's a compromise meaning that I have to set it up in such a way that is the optimum for this instrument <laughs> Down a 
whole step, I believe it is. So, so I set up everything according to how this base wants to be set up. It lets me know. That's why I got to know all the instruments so intimately. Even with this instrument, which is a newer instrument, Baby Blue, it's a newer instrument and it will change if I'm traveling, if the weather is hot or cold, the humidity, the altitude, all sorts of different factors, a new set of strings. The wood is still breathing. With the older instruments, they're a lot more settled. The wood has dried out, so they're not likely to budge as much. With this one, it's still alive. Can you hear me? <laughs> How do we do this? Nicely in tune. Now, now what I'm going to do, and I teach this in my True Fire fretless bass course, is to get right above the fret line visually, okay? So I can see that I'm right in the middle of that. Pretty good. Now, here is the key. I go through some of the other positions as well. If I just rely on the octave, then it kind of doesn't paint the whole picture. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the seventh fret, the D. I get right above that, visually, right in the middle of the fret position. Right? <laughs> And then look up here to the 12, 15, 17th fret, which is the high C. And so you go through each of the strings, do the same thing, the octave. So I'm gonna demonstrate something to you right now, okay? I am going to loosen this right off. Sorry, bass. So that has shortened the distance here, right? This is going to be sharp now on here. And then play the octave. That one too. It varies on the position on uh, the note as well. So the way to remember it is if it's sharp, then it's short. Meaning this distance, the scale length is short. That needs to be lengthened, it's short. So to make it longer, I'm gonna move the bridge saddle that way to make this, the string length, longer. It should be in tune now. Yeah, that's good. If I do it the other way, Nicely in tune. Oh, you can hear that, and you can hear that. It is way flat. And so, okay, if it's sharp, then it's short. So, one. Oh, 
All the best. Have fun.